All right, thanks guys. So we're going to run through maybe 15 minutes of a presentation about uh, kind of best practice around managing designs inside of JIRA and how you operate that in a dual track fashion. So in a lot of projects, the traditional approach is to do all the designs up front. And that can take months and months trying to get everything pixel perfect. Our approach is to uh, make that process parallel to the actual development. And we'll talk a bit about an example scenario of how we use that. Uh, we actually do use this on several of our clients. Uh, so I'm going to run through some examples of the workflow. We'll start by talking a bit about uh, get this working. the dual track concept. So we'll review some of that. We'll run through an example backlog and then view some example tasks and stories that designers can create, and product managers can create, and what the relationships are between those two. And then we'll actually kind of see it in action on boards and fil using filters and so on inside of JIRA. So real quickly, let's just get everyone up to speed on what we mean by Scrum and how we take that and parallelize it. Traditional process of backlog, where you take that product backlog, take a slice of it, start working on it in a sprint through either one to four week durations with daily standups, and then you produce a potentially shippable increment at the end of it. In dual track, you're essentially running both the discovery and the development track in parallel. So most of our discovery activity is design. So design work in specific in this situation. Sometimes you'll have technical spikes like researching integration points. So you'll have a discovery track that takes its own backlog. And you can see there it has its own backlog. And as it matures it, it produces a potentially shippable increment, in this case designs. Your development team may not have as much backlog when you first start. So we often call this first iteration Sprint Zero, where the development team may be setting up environments, repositories, doing any technical investigations or integration spikes. And you'll see they don't have much to work on. So they're heavily dependent on discovery formulating the uh, designs and the solution, and then the development team actually executing and implementing that. And you can see as you produce, an outcome from discovery, it leads into the backlog for development. So now development has a uh, task that's building out designs, uh, taking that uh, uh, technical spike and implementing it, and that gets added to the development's backlog. And the process continues and so on and so on. And you can see that our development backlog starts to grow, and our discovery backlog will maintain itself as there's more and more roadmap. So it's very critical that discovery teams get ahead of the delivery team and the development team. Uh, so that often, ideally, is about two sprints. That means that you want to have your designs out at least two sprints. Now, initially, that's tough because you have a lot of work up front. So we'll talk a bit about some activities you can do in Sprint Zero and what a typical backlog looks like. Uh, and on some of our clients, we've actually, in Louis Dreyfus in this case, taken this approach and applied it directly into Jira. So let's talk about a typical backlog. You see everything in stories, and they're all kind of in there, and you're wondering as a designer, well, I see like code repository and setup and integration investigations and developing login screens, but where's my research task? Where's my uh, uh, style guide and my navigation? And wh where's building the UX for my login screen and homepage? Because I need to track that. And I think at the moment, we're not really doing that as effective as we could. So what we're going to talk a bit about is a process we've been using on Louis Dreyfus. And in this case, you can see we've started to formulate a, a bit of a workflow that allows the designers to create tasks that are design tasks and then uh, implement those within the same uh, Scrum board. And then you can plan out as ahead by creating dependencies. So uh, you see we create the tasks first. We'll actually estimate those design tasks link those to the corresponding development tasks as blockers, progress it through the workflow just like a normal story, and then add the attachments to the relevant story when we're done. So if you're doing a UX tax and you have wireframes, you'll add those to the uh, UI story that's dependent on those wireframes. If you produce then the mockups for the wire from those wireframes, you'll add the mockups to the development story. So when the developers roll up, they have those designs ready to go. And you'll essentially, once you're done, move that design task to done. And then you can move on to the next one. So you're essentially doing the same thing that the development team is doing, except you have uh, tasks that are focused on stories in the next sprint. 
So it sounds a little confusing, but it actually makes sense if you look at how we implement it inside of JIRA. So I'm going to jump over to JIRA real quickly and show you what this looks like. So we have the same situation. In this case, I'm building a pizza delivery app, and I've got all my development stories here. But we need to produce the corresponding design stories. So I'll actually go and have the designers create the relevant stories that they need as well. So design research, style guides, any uh, UI uh, or information architecture research activities, site navigation, and then we'll actually start creating individual tasks. And I'll have uh, Eric explain why we have separate tasks for UI and separate tasks for UX for each feature. So essentially, when we start building this functionality out, we can create these as individual design tasks. So normally, we've been creating these as tasks inside of JIRA. But they're not really tasks. They're actually more design tasks. So we've created a specific issue type that's called design task. And it allows you to control what it's doing. So is it UX? Is it UI? Is it style guide? Is it branding? Is it mood boards? Whatever it is, you can control what that is. But here it has the ability for you to specify it as a design task, then filter and report on it individually and independent from all the other development tasks. So it won't impact any of the reporting that we do uh, within development and release planning. So let's dive into the uh, example scenario where we have both our design and development tasks on the same board. So now you can see we have lots of tasks there. Uh, how do you manage it so that I'm a developer, I'm logging in, I don't want to see 30 tasks that aren't relevant to me? Well, that's where filtering starts to come in. So let's say that your team uh, is starting to take this Sprint Zero and start working on it. You have an entire backlog of activity here. Well, you can use those filters to just filter out all the design tasks as a designer and bookmark this page. Now, I can start to progress this through the workflow. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have Eric kind of explain what the process looks like for progressing design tasks through the system, working with the client, and what we do with the artifacts after we create them. All right? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> the way that we've been uh, structuring this with Louis Dreyfus is by Letting, letting the PM set up the schedule for Sprint 1, Sprint 2 from a development standpoint with some collaboration, giving design input as to, okay, what, what can we feasibly, or what, what makes sense to have done by the time Sprint 1 starts. So in working with them and setting the schedule for the development process, you can set your design tasks in Sprint 0 and try to structure it in a way to where it makes sense. So, you here how can i go back to that other the backlog the jira board mm -hmm. oh here i'll just do this so having the so looking ahead to sprint 1 you can see that there is a login screen homepage navigation and footer a lot of times those sections will be broken out into features which uh, as designers we don't really think in terms of features. We think of holistically of the page. What is the goal of the page? What's the problem we're trying to solve? Development thinks in terms of features. So you can look at the features that are scheduled for Sprint 1 and see a grouping or, you know, ideally all the features are belong to one section that allows us to focus on a section, think holistically about that section and design for it. Um, so in, in this particular example, you see the login screen, homepage, navigation, and footer are in Sprint 1. So design tasks are created um, <clears throat> for those sections, UX and UI. Um, for each section, UX being the wireframes, once that process is through, attaching it to the UI story. So when the UI designer starts, they see the wireframes they're supposed to base the UI off of. And then when they're done, as Bill was saying, attach the UI to the development story so the developers know what UI to reference when, when building those stories. Um, so how we've been working, or how we plan to start working through the process is similar to how developers have these four columns. We have a to-do column, a development column, QA, and done. So to provide visibility into our process, to do is obviously it's still a to do column. 
development would be uh, an in process column. So if I'm working on the design research to get started, I'll just drag it over to development. Um, so everyone on the project is aware that's what I'm working on. At the time when it's being reviewed for by the client waiting for a review, that would be designs QA. Um, and in that back and forth section, that's what QA would represent. And then obviously done is when it's approved and ready to go. Um, so this is a way we can use JIRA as a way to show our process and show our progress uh, to everyone on the team. Um, Do you want to show how the, the dependencies and blockers are there? Yeah. Oh, are they linked? Okay, cool. Do you like logins? So if I move this back over and I go to login screen, how, yeah, how we would make these dependencies is just to block the development story by our design task and, and create links. So uh, this, this example works, but uh, in the case of Louis Dreyfus, let's say I'm working on a page that has a list of shipments and a feature of that is I need to be able to sort and filter those shipments. I need to be able to view a list of those shipments. I need to be able to search shipments. I need to be able to, you know, all of those are individual stories. So what we would do in that, or what we have been doing in that scenario is creating one design story, the sprint ahead for shipments that would encompass all of the, all of the features from a design standpoint. And then we can write our design notes like, well, it needs to be intuitive, we need to make it easy to do this, and all of our thought process behind design, and then link it through either blocking or say it relates to the development story. So uh, in that scenario, you would have one, one task for shipments and then three features or however many features the developers would be building based on that, for that page. That's basically it. Yeah, so there's a few things that we're still playing around with, like whether or not we want to estimate stories that are design tasks. Um, right now, we're going to try doing it because otherwise it becomes very difficult knowing how much you can pull in for a given sprint from a design standpoint. And that's essentially why story points are there. So we're gonna start actually estimating some of the design tasks. Now, that, that's gonna be tough because sometimes you just don't know what a design task is gonna take you. And that's okay. I think it's more about us understanding when we do have stories that continually spill over or take much longer, we understand then how to better estimate those stories. So for example, we typically know that navigation or information architecture could be really lengthy because that drives a lot of the user experience. Other things we know are typically smaller because we've done them pretty frequently. So there's lots of different things that we understand from a design standpoint, how much effort it's gonna take. That's useful information for us from a planning standpoint from product management. So we know one design is gonna take longer than another. That dependency we can map in there and we can plan our backlog appropriately. So a lot of these different techniques we're still exploring and learning and playing around with and we encourage you guys to kind of adopt some of these on your projects and give feedback. If it's working, let us know. If it's not, let us know. If you want to tweak it, we're in the process of kind of creating a standard template that you can pull off the shelf and use for your projects. So when a new project spins up, you'll have all of these design tasks and filters out of the box that you can start with on day one. Uh, so it'll give you a nice kind of uh, way to get up to speed quickly with your team. So that's, that's about it. I don't know if you guys have any questions.